All right. Welcome everyone once again to the Wednesday Night Warriors. This is episode number six. We are going to cover the July 8th editions of NXT and AEW Dynamite. Of course, it is the Great American Fighter Fest Bash week number two. But before we get into tonight, I want to remind you guys once again, please thumbs up this video, subscribe if you haven't already. If you're new here, we've got shows galore coming out every day covering all companies of wrestling. You want to tune into this, tell some friends. If you enjoy this video, if you enjoy this channel, you know, we're creeping up to 600 subscribers. We could definitely use some more subscribers. Absolutely. Now. Tonight, before we get into tonight, let's talk about last week real quickly. The ratings war, AEW up 115,000 from their lowest rating yet. They got 748,000 viewers, but NXT won again. They were up 6K to 792,000 viewers. They win that Wednesday night war by 44K. I could not believe it. I thought for sure. Fighter Fest was going to win night one. AEW is still up with that 31 to 7 to 1 score. It's a, it's like a football <laughs> blowout. It really is. But were you guys shocked by this rating? Yeah, I was kind of shocked. I thought Fighter Fest had more steam going into the first week. So I thought they were going to just win in the ratings because they had more stuff going on. Yeah, I thought I thought Fighter Fest had more star power, but I knew the EO versus Sasha match was a really big hook for them. So I'm not surprised that they won in the ratings. The draw, Sasha Banks, as she likes to call herself. Don't tell Chris Jericho any of this. He's still gonna tell you it's all about the eighteen to what is it, thirty four or thirty five? 18 to 34 key demo, because it yeah. is. That's what the advertisers oh, pay attention Jericho to. And, so much and fun with AEW, that on AEW won again in the 18 to 40, 18 to 34 key demo. Yeah. All us old farts watching. <laughs> we we don't matter. On the Wednesday night Warrior scoreboard, I was amazed, shocked, and awed when all three of us agreed that NXT was the better show last week. Uh, you guys, the viewers, the true heels on the Facebook group poll, I was even more shocked because you actually picked NXT once for the first time by a vote of 17 to 11. AEW still had those votes from people that don't even watch NXT. It, it should have been a, a much uh, uh, worse disparity there. But yes, so NXT wins. And on our scoreboard, the Wednesday Night Warriors scoreboard, AEW is up 3 to 2 in quality for all five weeks so far. Let's get into tonight, the Great American Fighter Fest Bash, night two. And let's start with AEW with their tag team opener, Private Party with Matt Hardy versus Kenny Omega, Hangman Page. And, oh man, this was better than, for me, for me, this is just my opinion. This was better than last week's opener when it comes to the selling and the chaos. But still, still, once again, you don't need to tag. You can just come in the ring whenever you want. The referee does the referee does this sh this shit. He just waves his hands. He's like, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here. But he does he doesn't really mean it. He doesn't really mean it. Holy shit. You hear that? <laughs> Did I say something wrong? <laughs> Are they coming for me? <laughs> Yeah, they're coming for you. Like oh, they hear man. you. Already they hear the, you. With the true heel no, heat crazy. already. We got the fire the fire alarm going off. Is that a bomb alarm? Like, I don't know. What is that? I think <laughs> it's like it's like it's like like people are upset at you for being the Hispanic Jim Cornette. Like they're like they like <laughs> they're like cut your shit. You enjoyed this match. Will you stop it? <laughs> I enjoyed it more than last week's opener. Uh, last call, Omega and Page win. Hangman once again gets the pin. Keep an eye on that. Every time they win, keep an eye on that. Uh, I still, I thought it was a decent match. Your, your guys' thoughts? Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was a decent match. It was much less of a spot fest than uh, last week's tag team match, but a spot fest nonetheless. But I enjoyed it. It was a good pace. 
uh, the chemistry between Hangman and Kenny Omega just continues to blow me away. And every time I see Matt Hardy with that tight shirt and private party, he is now going to be referred to as Papi Chulo Matt. So he has yet another version. Papi Chulo Matt. That's the, that's the one that e- eats my fungo. Yeah, that's um, the Puerto Rican version. Uh, I really, I really like this match. It was a, it was a good match to kick off the show. Um, I like, I like Hangman getting in the face of Private Priority to start off this match with their ongoing saga because Hangman never paid them the twelve dollars for that drink on the first Dynamite of 2020. They've been going with that storyline ever since then on uh, BTE and the online thing, and then they had the match earlier this year. So they bring it back here. It was very nice, and I, and this was a great performance by private party because I, I know the guys over on all elite recap jimmy and cash they're always complaining because they love private party and they feel like they're they're not given the opportunities on dynamite too often but this was a good spotlight on them to really like perform go out there and show what they had and that's what they did and hangman and Ken, hangman and kenny even kenny where you can you can tell kenny is hurt because he's not moving the way that he he was a couple of months back. You could tell, like, it's either, like, the shoulder, the neck. I don't know what's going on. But he's moving a little bit slower in the ring. But even Kenny at 70, 60% is better than most wrestlers in the world. And Kenny and Hangman have formed into one of the best tag teams in wrestling. Oh, my God. That private party theme song to open up the show? I was just, I was, uh, yo, they, they hooked me into to AEW. Like, shots. Shots, 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 shots. And, 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 and then the dancing to it and shit. I was like, yo, they get you, they get you hyped right off the bat to kick off the show. I was like, yo, this is how you start off a wrestling show. How long do you think and, they'll make us better? And I wanted to make a good point here because I was thinking about this during the during the match. To answer your question, I think he's probably been hurt ever since Stadium Stampede, um, because that's when I feel like he started like slowing down a little bit. But the thought I had during this matchup was everybody – I know there's a subsection of fans that complain about the Hangman and Kenny Omega tag team being tag team champions. And they talk about, oh, man, AEW has all these great tag teams. Like, why can't they give all these great tag teams the opportunity to be the tag team champions? Why does it have to be Kenny and Hangman? Think about it. Best friends. They were formed in PWG. The Young Bucks were formed in Ring of Honor, or PWG. Uh, SCU, the first tag team champions, they were formed in Ring of Honor. The FTR is from the WWE. All the tag teams, Lucha Bros, are from AAA. All these tag teams were formed in other places. What's the only tag team on the tag team roster that was formed in AEW? That It, like, hit me like an epiphany. I was like, the only team that was formed in AEW is Hangman and Kenny Omega. They're the, they're the most organically homegrown tag team that AEW has formed in its uh, in its own incarnation. Fair point, fair point. Uh, you said Matt Hardy was a uh, Puerto Rican Papi Chulo, so... Take a shot. Take a shot for that one. NXT opens very quickly. Uh, Candice comes out, and right away she's jumped by Mia Yim. NXT going for the... <laughs> Going for the viewers really quickly. But, however, as always, they have the first commercial. They cannot resist. The main event would be commercial-free, I understand, at least. Uh, This was a street fight. I thought a pretty decent street fight. They used a lot of weapons. And eventually, uh, Mia Yim uh, uses brass knucks that she found in William Regal's office, probably. Candace hits a chair into the brass knucks. Then she buries Mia in chairs. Sets the the table set up on the top rope. Uh, Mia gets out of the chair. She goes to the top rope. And Candice pries the brass knucks out of Mia Yim's hand and does a swinging neck breaker. Beautiful bump by Mia Yim. Candice wins. Your your guys' thoughts on this match? I liked it. Uh, I thought it was physical. The commercial, man, it threw me off again. These, These early commercial breaks... But NXT are killing me. They're throwing me off the first match, which is such an important match. So when we got back to the, from the break, um, they just beat the shit out of each other. I enjoyed it. And I thought Mia was going to win. We'll get into that. 
I, I like this match. It was a really decent, very hard-hitting street fight. And this was probably, arguably, I would say, uh, Mia Yim and Candice LeRae's best matchup since they've been on NXT. Oh, what about uh, Candice Eel? You're right. You're right. I would, it was definitely but Mia definitely Yim's Mia best Yim. match yeah. on NXT. Yeah, yeah. AEW, Lance Archer versus Joey Janela. Archer starts the match by throwing Sunny Kiss at Joey Janela. <laughs> I thought this was a nice, hard-hitting match. Blackout through a table on the outside. Archer wins. I, I, I like the match, but I think Archer should be getting this match over with in much less time. Maybe not much less, a little less time. Let me say a little less. But time. but they made that the story, though. That I think you, uh, the, the, they made that the story of the whole match. They kept saying that Jake the Snake Roberts was imploring him to end the match. And he just kept playing with his food. He's he's the big he's the big bear that has the whole carcass. The carcass is dead, and he just keeps like nipping at it. He doesn't want to kill it. Let me he rephrase it then. Let, let me rephrase it then. I don't think Joey Janela should be getting uh, that much offense on Lance Archer. How about that? He didn't. He didn't he get got any some. offense. He didn't. He, got he literally some. got one move. He literally got one move. He I kept think... clotheslining him, and the dude wouldn't even sell. He had one move that Lance Archer sold the entire match. I don't think that was a that was a lot of offense. I think he got more than you than you than you're saying. He got a little bit more offense in, but it made sense because of the backstory leading up to the match. That's why I'm okay with the time. If it was no fucking story going into the match, then yeah, he should have squashed him in four minutes. But I mean, the time that they went made sense. It's it's not it's not a huge complaint of mine. It's a minor one, very very minor. Over on NXT, Bronson Thick Boy Reed versus Tony Nese. This match out of nowhere. You know, Bronson didn't look all that bad, but but the problem here is the very weird booking, considering he just lost to Karrion Cross a few weeks ago. Bronson Reed wins. They tried to explain it by saying that there was a match before NXT, like a dark match with Nice versus uh, Leo, Leon Ruff, which is, I guess, now going to be like the tag team partner for Bronson Reed. But it was like, but Bronson Reed is the babyface. And they explained that he went to GM Regal and got this match made. So I was like, so you telling me he wanted to fight a guy that already fought tonight? I was like, he's not much of a babyface here. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know there was a, a little dark match. It was just thrown together out of nowhere. But a, a loss of carrying cross doesn't really hurt him. So I understand that they still want to try to, like, start building him up. So it makes sense. Tony Nese is good. It was a good, it was a decent match. Uh, it was what it was. It made Bronson look good. Darby Allen still hasn't forgotten about Brian Cage. He does a coffin drop into some toy blocks, I guess is what you would call them. I, 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 they're, they're just brilliant with these little, these little, like, short, it, within seconds, they make Darby Allen look like a star. Like, you have Tony Hawk and Travis Pastrana you're hanging out with just randomly while you're not wrestling. Like, I was like, this dude's so cool. The best part, though, is that Darby pretty much has, like, all the control over those vignettes, or most of the control. So those are all, like, his brainchild. And I've never seen a guy, once again, not medically cleared to wrestle, try to kill himself in a different sport <laughs> every week. I mean, you just got to help. You, you can't help but love him. Taz comes out with Brian Cage. He warns this is going to be an iconic moment. He presents the FTW title championship. Why are you doing that with your hands? Oh. Because there's a signal that this was the best part of the whole entire show. <laughs> this was the best part of the whole entire show. Like, this was, like, I'm, like, I was really into, like, both shows at this point. Like, I was kind of going back and forth. And this was the first time that I was, like, oh, I have to go on Twitter and I have to tweet about how awesome Taz is on the mic. Like, he is, um, I was like, I was like, I, I apologize to all the great promo guys out there. Like 2020, we've had a lot of great promos. Edge, Randy Orton, uh, uh, it, you know, there's, there's a bunch of the MJF on, on AEW, but no one, I mean, no one 
has stolen the show week after week with just his words like Taz. And Taz did it again. Yeah, that fucked the world championship, man. When I seen him, I, I didn't know what he was bringing out at first. And then when he says that he created it decades ago, I'm like, this motherfucker did not bring back the FTW championship. Then he gave it to Cage. I mean, it's just, it's weird. I would never thought I would ever see that belt I, back. I, I had to think about it. I was like, is that season to sit shit right there? But no, that's Taz's shit, no. apparently, right? Yeah. No, he created that in, in ECW. That was a part renegade of the Renegade whole... shit, as he likes to put it. It's a, rene- <laughs> it's a renegade shit. I was like, <laughs> what a lie. <laughs> I was like, put that on a t-shirt, please. Put it in orange. Absolutely. Oh, we'll see it. We'll see it soon. AWShirts.com, wherever it is. And that so FTW he... title looked clean. It's already it's already just behind the, the AEW world title for the best looking title in AEW. Well, much better than the TNT champion. Um... I like the tag titles. I like the tag titles, but FTW title, I'm sorry. Uh, Yeah. I hate the women's title. Oh, hate it. I think we all do. No, I like Uh, it. uh, It's a a throwback. Mm. Mm. Um, I wanted to point out that I think Taz is just so good that he should represent more people than just... Brian Cage. I, I think he should start his own stable, uh, similar in the fashion that Zelina Vega over on Raw has. I I just don't see it work. Uh, I can see maybe down the line that that working, but right now, yes, okay, just that's at, fine. At Taz and Taz and Brian Cage was just on fire. Like like now, like like I'm like Jimmy. Like I said to I suggested to Jimmy last week on AE recap. I was like. I think that Darby Allen should be the person to interfere next week to distract Brian Cage to protect him. We have to protect Brian Cage. We can't yeah. have him just lose clean to Moxley. Like I am sorry. Dirty finish. Have, yeah, I I will take it. There, there are certain necessary times for a dirty finish, and this is it. We have to protect Brian Cage. Guys, it's it's AEW. I think the term is That's a dusty fine. finish. That's fine. Oh. It's a dusty finish. Okay, I'll accept that. If okay, let me throw this on you. If if you were to have Taz represent someone else in AEW uh, to add to his uh, uh, faction, if he wants to create one, do you guys have anyone off the top of your head you could think of that could use him as a mouthpiece? I personally would like to suggest, even though they're in the inner circle, but the inner circle doesn't even seem together right now uh, without Sammy Guevara. I, I was thinking Sant- of the same, same Santana ones. and Ortiz, the New York connection. Even though Santana can talk a little bit and Ortiz is hilarious, uh, still it'd be nice to give him that that rough that rough edge, you know, from Taz. Yeah, that would give them a little bit of an edge that they've kind of lost by being in the inner circle and being like in comedy bits. I was gonna say out of the blue, out of the blue, just fantasy booking, I would turn Scorpio Sky Hill out of SCU. Let him, you know, go with Taz. Maybe it could elevate him into an upper mid card guy. Bring something, you know, bring a little spark under him. Because he can go, you know. We just got to see where his character takes him. Shots. 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 Oh, man. Who, who, am I talking to drunk guy JJ? Top guy JJ? Who is this? Shots. <laughs> Robert Stone time. That oh, dude. my God. Jabroni. Oh my no 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 I I am not gonna accept this this week I am not gonna accept it this week because I was begging for months for someone to show personality on this show. Yes, you were. I remember that. And, and Robert Stone has been delivering, and in this week I will not accept him even being a candidate for Jabroni of the of the night because he was the funniest. Thing on NXT tonight. <laughs> he tries to recruit Shotzi Blackheart to the Robert Stone brand. Shotzi says, Shotzi in her tank, by the way. Uh, she, she says she rides solo. Uh, and then she drives the tank over Robert Stone's foot. Robert Stone screams he's dying. He's like, I'm dying! I'm dying! 
as he tries to swim out from underneath the tank. <laughs> very oh. funny, very funny. Yo, I could not stop laughing. <laughs> it was entertaining. It is pretty so, funny. Does anybody want to join? The, is anybody going to join the Rob Stone Brand? Damn, this guy is hurting. <laughs> Nobody wants to join. No, I think I think he's going to end up landing somebody big eventually. Big? Big. Eventually. I don't know who, but eventually. I, I think Killian Dane is going to join the Robert Stone. Yo. Brand. That's the second. He, he, he needs That's the it. second time. That's the second time that he's interacted with him. Basically, the segment when he was asking Shotzi to join the uh, the Robert Stone brand, and then she she refused. So he had a coffee in his hand, and he's like, oh, you refuse? You refuse? And he threw the coffee back, and then uh, Aaliyah and the interviewer were like, and then he turned around, and it was uh, Killian Dane that he spilled his coffee on. So Killian Dane grabbed him up and threw him onto the ground, and that's how he was on the ground for Shotzi to run him over. Killian Dane could definitely use something to get him going. I know, I know, I know. You don't like him, SP3, right? You, well, you like him, but you you don't like him so far in NXT. Is that what you want to say? His, his character, his character is the new Forgotten Son. Minus minus the racism. My, my, <laughs> yeah. Minus the tweets and uh, the the praising of certain uh, public figures. You know, yeah. I I just I'm not interested in his character. Like they done nothing with him since his return to NXT. Over on AEW, we have a huge eight-man tag. Lucha Bros, Butcher and the Blade, they come in riding on FTR's truck. Who wants to talk about this match? I, I know you. I know you guys are seething. <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of expected. You know, like during the commercial break, eventual commercial break, and when uh, the first like part of the match with FTR, I knew it was going to be like a traditional tag match in certain parts, and then it was just going to go, you know, bananas. Chaos. Gonna, yeah, total carnage in other spots. So it, it balanced out really well. It got enough time, and towards the end, like the last four minutes were fucking Woo! ridiculous. It was what ridiculous. And I just want to say Nick Jackson plus Ray Phoenix equals magic. Every single time. Every single fucking time. They are the gold standard when it comes to pick anybody on the AEW roster. Pick two guys to put in the ring and they will always entertain you or you will always see something new or something that gets you off your seats. You're absolutely right. It is Nick Jackson and Ray Phoenix. I, I had to tweet that out. I was like... This that's my my personal favorite. There are, there are probably matches that are that have been better on AEW Dynamite, but the my favorite match that's been on AEW Dynamite was Ray Phoenix versus Nick Jackson, and we got a little bit of that in this matchup, and it just made it that much better. I just love the whole story of the matchup. They they started it real tag team traditionalist with FTR starting it off only tagging to each other, and then the Young Bucks tagging themselves in, and then once once the Young Bucks and the Lucha Bros were in the ring we know it was going to turn it was going to go from from a seven to an 11 and a half off the richter scale and that's what happened when ray phoenix and nick jackson was in the ring but my god that that bounce off of pentagon's back ray phoenix <laughs> canadian destroyer to the outside pile is one of the best spots of the year that I like I I never I, seen that in my life. I no, never, never I never seen anything like that. And I literally I was like I I had I had NXT on my laptop. I literally shut the laptop down. I was like I was like Swerve versus Gargano. This is a good match, but I'm sorry. No. <laughs> what did I just see? <laughs> In this match, a lot of mixing and matching moves between FTR and the Young Bucks, you know, uh, sort of like uh, dividing with one member at FTR, another member of Young Bucks, and they do each other's moves. I thought that was cool. More teasing of that as we get to that eventual match sometime down the line. Uh, after the Canadian Destroyer, Matt Jackson super kicks Dax by accident. The Lucha Bros take advantage. They win. Uh, surprisingly, the Young Bucks and FTR shake hands after 
despite the miscommunication there at the end. Yeah, I just want to point out, I don't know if anybody else saw it, but Blade from Butcher and Blade came out looking like Bruce Willis in The Fifth Element. Now let me quickly find that image so I can put it in the video right here. Oh, trust me. <laughs> trust me. It's worth it. I was saving that one. Uh, I loved it. I loved the finish. Like, like I was like, I was like this. I knew this match was gonna be great, but to take it to a next level, they had to give the a finish like this, where I everybody kind of going in thought FTR and the Young Bucks were gonna win. I think only our good friend uh, Jessica V was the only one yeah. that that predicted the Lucha Bros and Butcher and now, Blade. Now you didn't see any spoilers, did you, Jessica? We're looking at you, Jessica. You better <laughs> you better answer answer honestly in the comment section. But yeah, no, I, I, I just love this finish. It was smart to to kinda the whole story was about FTR and the Young Bucks working together and one miscue. From one miscue, the entire match led to them losing. And the Lucha Bros put some goddamn respect on their name. That is Settle. All. Saro Miero. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Over on NXT, uh, uh, SP3 may have shut off his laptop, but this was a good match. <laughs> I got it on DVR, so I just, uh, I, just re- I just rewind it back, and I kept watching. Isaiah Swerve Scott versus Johnny Gargano. Gargano wins, but what a great showing for Swerve. Um... He really shined in this match. I want to say, though, is it just a good showing for Swerve? Is it just a good match for him? Or are you going to do something with him and build off of it? That's the questions you sometimes wonder in NXT with some talents. That's where I'm at with, with Swerve now. Like, this was another good match. Anytime they give this guy 10 minutes or more on NXT, it's always a good match. I, I've been hearing him tearing it up on 205 Live as well. Anytime he's given 10 minutes on there, he tears it up and he has the best match on the card. So I have, I like, I don't know how to feel coming out of this. There was nothing for me to like grab on and be like, oh, maybe, maybe, you know, they're gonna, they have something for him. Like, I would have even took a random heel coming out and beating him up. That, at least that's a story to come off of this. So we have something to hold on to, but. All it is is another good performance, just like his good performance months ago against Roger Strong that nobody remembers now. Just like he's had many of good matches, and it's just sad. Yeah, I was I was going to say, um, he's had really good matches on 205 Live, and it's a shame that they don't give him more of a spotlight on NXT because, I mean, I hope this was more of a test of to see what he can do because this is the best match. This is the best he's ever looked on NXT, in my opinion. So... I hope he can build upon this. I hope he, you know, turn he turn he rolls some heads and maybe they do something with him. But I don't want to see him keep going out like this. <laughs> I hope so too. Over on AEW, Big Swole is not allowed in the building. She served a what was it? A suspension, I guess. Yes. Yeah. She called. You can't, uh, you can't kidnap people. Yeah. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah. Ah, uh, calls calls. Calls her Brittany Basura Baker. <laughs> Io Shirai is underwater again. She tells Tegan Knox that they have a lot in common, but says that the difference is Tegan can't do it by herself and that she has no friends. Yo, I kind of forgot that Io Shirai was a heel <laughs> after facing Sasha Banks last week. I forgot she's a fucking heel. And she has to talk shit about Tegan Knox. Io and Tiga Knox will happen next week on NXT for the Women's Championship. I don't think Io's a heel, but she's that a That was ba- a nasty thing. She's a bad. She's <laughs> right. No, 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 no. It wasn't nasty. It was the goddamn truth. Like, Tegan, Tegan, Tegan won a fatal four-way. She did not beat Dakota on her own. So, one, she can't do anything on her own. Two, Dakota... She did beat her- Dakota on her own. It was elimination. No, wait, no, she did. What? She didn't eliminate Mia Yim and Candice LeRae. She didn't eliminate everybody in the match. She didn't do everything on so? her own. Dakota took offense 
from Mia Yim, from Candice LeRae. So it wasn't just her that took out Dakota Kai. It was other people that helped her get the victory. That's the point. That's the point. And Dakota turned her back on Tegan. So no, she doesn't have any friends. And and Shotzi's too busy trying to kill people to be her friend. So EO has great points. <laughs> Nyla Rose with a handicap match. Nyla Rose wins. <laughs> He's like a drug. <laughs> any, 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 anything else? No, that was, that was pretty much it. Yeah, that was pretty much it. She did say after the match that she she's gonna have a manager. Yes. She because because everyone that has a manager in AEW seems to have a to be a champion. <laughs> Look at Brian K. Look at Brian K. She just got here. He got a title. Uh, she should hit up uh, our good friend Taz. <laughs> you know? I was gonna. I want. I wanted to ask. I wanted to ask. Who do you guys think is gonna be the manager? Fuck, can I say Taz? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't fucking know. You can go with Taz. I would, I would love for it to be Taz. That would be that would be awesome. that would be a nice little uh, pairing. That would be kind of funny. I think yeah. it's I think it's gonna be a female. I just if don't know it, who. You don't know who. Uh, if it's a female, if I'm looking at the landscape in wrestling, if I can name one person off the top of my head. She's been, she's been, her name has been in the news a lot because she wants to expose all WWE uh, throwaway storylines, but Maria Kanellis? Maybe, possibly. I was thinking maybe I? even Vicky Guerrero. Ooh, Ooh. I like that. I like that a lot. I mean, I mean, she's been fucking with AEW the last couple, you know, months she's been showing yeah. up, so she would be a good Yeah, that's, my, good pick. that's my pick, too. I agree. Yeah, I changed my pick. Yeah, I go with you. You're right. Great pick. Great pick by all of us. <laughs> uh, Cole Cabana is hurt. It looks like he has the fucking bubonic plague, whatever you call it. It looks awful. Uh, but Brody Lee tells him to get his ass out there. Yeah. Now, now I didn't like hear all of this because, like, like we said, we're Wednesday Night Warriors. So I don't know if you guys did, if the people watching in the comment section could tell us in the comment section, did they like say that he was like attacked or something or like, I didn't know what, why he had like the bruising or anything on him, but I, I felt like it was the dark order, like attacked him to make him like, to give him like another storyline to prove himself to them. I don't know. Yeah, they uh they said that he got attacked backstage randomly, like somebody threw him into like one of the barriers, and that's how you know he got that whatever the fuck it was, and Brody Lee was just like rub some dirt on it, and you know, <laughs> I think I think the Dark Order definitely you know what what you said what you said, <laughs> I think so too. Over on NXT, like God Old Fantasma versus Drake Maverick and Brizango. Uh, Brizango came out dressed up as. Los Conquistadors! They gotta be put in the WWE Hall of Fame one day. What a tag team. What a legendary tag team. Anyways, this match, Santos Escobar pins Drake Maverick in the end with the Phantom Driver. Any thoughts on this match? Yeah. It, it was what it was. Nothing special. Drake Maverick looks fit in so well with Breezango. He looked like their little brother. <laughs> they look like a grown up version of the three ninjas with uh with uh Drake playing Tum Tum, who's it? Tyler Breeze is uh Colt and uh Fandango is Rocky. Yes, I remember all three of their names. Wow. They look like the dollar version of the Butabi brothers from Night at the Roxbury. Like all three of them are just in the club. What is love? Stop, baby, baby, don't, don't hurt, hurt me. me. Don't hurt me. No more. I did not see that coming. <laughs> you guys got me doing extra editing and photoshopping for this review. <laughs> Woo! You got your work cut out for you, pal. <clears throat> the Dark Order versus SC Boo! The entire Dark Order is on the stage to watch. I personally hate talking about this Colt Cabana storyline, so you guys can take this one. Why? Why are you hating? 
because it's so it's Coca Bad does not deserve this much attention. Jeez. Yes, he does. He, they had let, let him go manage Nyla Rose. I like I give a fuck about him. Oh my god, you're ridiculous. Everyone has <laughs> to have a story. Everyone has to have something going on. And I like this for Colt Cabana. He was somebody he was somebody that they had to make sense of bringing into the company and taking L's and they made sense of it with this whole Dark Order storyline and I like it. I like the whole story of this matchup where he wasn't he was kind of like the weak link of the match the entire time where the Dark Order had to keep coming in and helping him out to to get the upper hand and he really didn't want to like go on the attack against uh scu because they're his friends then at the end uh it was brody lee that took out christopher daniels with the discus clothesline and once again he stopped grayson from getting the pin on uh on christopher daniels and told him to tag in cole cabana yeah i was more in, i was more interested in the, in the story than the actual match so i was you know i was i was just waiting for the payoff and there really wasn't any for me it was just you know uh, furthering the storyline with Cole Cabana, so more excited to see what's going on next week with them. Excited? Ugh. Well, well, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Intrigued? Got excited. I'm intrigued. Everybody's got to do something. I'm, I'm. I'd rather see everybody do something than see Swerve in fucking catering next week after he's just an amazing. <laughs> match. You know I mean? Thank you, thank you. Like, you know, but I, 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 I anybody agree. about Cole Cabana? There's got to be somebody else you can put in this role. Jeez. No, this yeah. is why does Cole Cabana need all this attention? Yeah. It's Cole Cabana. <laughs> what's, what's what's he need all this attention for? for? Yeah. This is perfect for him. It's going to lead to a payoff of probably him and Brody Lee. And Brody Lee wins. So who cares? It's building Colt up at the, at the same time. And what it's really doing is putting heat on Brody. That's the whole point of this. Yeah. Colt Cabana is 40 years old. Come on. So is he. Put, put a young guy in that spot. Jesus, just take it up a spot. Who? Who's the young guy? Suggest the young guy. Somebody. Give me anybody. Oh, somebody. Give me I have an uh, opinion. Kip Sabian. Fucking Kip Sabian. I have an opinion. It's not who they have on there. Kip Sabian. Yeah, that's my Kip opinion. Sabian. Kip, Kip Sabian. Sabian's not even a baby face. That's, you're missing the point I would went. I would have went Brandon Cutler. Personally, I would have went Brandon Cutler. Oh, he's even worse. It, yeah, but no he needs it. <laughs> but, but, he needs but, it. But Colt Cabana, at least, is someone the fans care about. That's why this works. What fans? <laughs> You're the here. Fans. You're Fuck here. The Fuck the fans. <laughs> FTF. <laughs> FTF. Oh. Santana Garrett versus the Puerto Rican Pride of the Bronx. Mercedes Martinez. Oh shit! Hold on, I forgot I had this. <laughs> the sleeve, the Wednesday night sleeve, the official sleeve <laughs> of Wednesday nights. Official <laughs> sleeve of Wednesday nights. Mercedes has a nice little entrance. She looks like a Mortal Kombat character. The Pride of the Bronx wins, and Moro teases that a women's title match is in her near future. Yeah. Yeah, whether she wins or not remains to be seen. We'll see how they build the rub to that point. But um, yeah, I'm excited to see what the future holds for her. I would love me some Io Shirai versus Mercedes Martinez. That sounds like goodness. Heel versus heel. Yes. But I'll take no, it. it's not a heel's <laughs> not, not a heel. Is a freaking heel. She's not She's a not heel. heel. You're just I'll a, a baby not face. Smart. You're just a Tegan, Tegan Knox. I love she's Tegan been, Knox. She's been a baby face ever since your queen decided to beat her with a stick. Like, that's that was the key to me. I think that's when she turned baby face because that was the marker. That was it. I'm sorry. But then but then she also went back backstage and started arguing with Rhea Ripley, who was a clear baby face. No, because no, Rhea was not. Rhea was Rhea's a not a baby face? Rhea was a jackass. Rhea was like, oh, Io Shirai, who just got screwed out of her title shot, didn't deserve another shot, but she did? That tapped out like a like a baby at WrestleMania? Are you freaking kidding me? Rhea, now... I, I Can you understand. say that again? Can you say it one more time? It's so sweet. I am- I understand. Like a baby. Why, I understand why Rhea Ripley does not have the momentum that she she used to have. She's been acting like a dick ever since she came back. 
since WrestleMania. She was a dick to Robert Stone. I, I, you know, a lack of a di- better term. Maybe I should come up with a better term. She's been a very mean person. She's been a, she's been a jerk. She's been a complete jerk. Robert Stone, she was a jerk to. She was a jerk to Io Shirai. That's true. She got involved in, in Charlotte's business when she had no reason to because Charlotte made her tap. She came at Charlotte. Charlotte won the Royal Rumble. Charlotte's up there minding her own business and deciding whose title she wants to take, whether it was Bailey or Becky, and Rhea Ripley decided to walk up on Raw and get in her business and then wind it up at WrestleMania, tapping out like, oh, I'm the next big team. Yeah, right. Thank you, Sid. That was all just a setup for you to wax poetically about Charlotte. I, I set the whole thing up. I set it up. Damn it. If there's anything I like more than one Puerto Rican segment, it's two Puerto Rican segments back to back, baby. Woo! Damien Priest, the Puerto Rican Robocop, as we referred to him last week. Ugh. He cuts a promo. Let's see if SB3 thought this promo was better than last week's promo. Go ahead, SB3. Thankfully, I missed it. Oh, <laughs> no. Actually, actually, he he's a lot better in vignettes than he is in fucking live interviews. Because <laughs> the vignette, true. no, but it came off dope. They got him with the cars in the street. Got, he's thug down. And he said, what, I forgot what he said. He said some, some real shit. Uh, real it'll movie. be Priest versus Grimes next week. And then he calls our boy Cameron Grimes a little bitch. Woo. Oh, <laughs> I'll take it. I'll and take by it. the That's way, Cameron to. Grimes on Twitter, uh, WWE on Fox, the Twitter account, they, they retweeted he's a little bitch. And Cameron Grimes said, delete. Uh, I'm very conflicted here. This is, you know, my Puerto Rican brother, Damian Priest, and, but I love Cameron Grimes. Oh, oh, this is tough. No, it's not. <laughs> well, who are you going for? I'm going for the Puerto Rican, obviously. Damn. But I'm, going I mean... for cri- I'm going for Crimes time. <laughs> Crimes time. At Fight for the Fallen next week. We've got some fire matches. Hopefully, oh if they if they do some if they do some selling, hopefully there's some fire matches. <laughs> Lucha Bros versus FTR. I know there's gonna be selling in that because FTR, their actual tag team that knows how to follow the tag team rules. Cody will have an open challenge for the TNT Championship. The elite, mm-hmm. the elite. Oh, it's Kenny three three. Omega and the Young Bucks. Yeah, oh, Kenny shit. Omega and the Young Bucks. Versus Jurassic Express. The Elite versus uh, Luchasaurus and two children. And <laughs> John Moxley makes his return versus Brian Cage. That's a good card. I was like, I was like, damn. And they, they, they once again, they was like, pa Dick on the table. Dick on the <laughs> table. They was like, they was like, okay, we we know you are gonna counter program Moxley versus Cage, which they did with Io Shirai versus Tegan Knox for the NXT Women's Title. So they was like, papa, we got a hard card for you, a whole long card for you. On Friday, WWE is gonna announce NXT's fucking Super Summer Bash. <laughs> Trying to get those ratings, pal. I'm telling you, man. Fight for the Fallen, and then it's going to be tribute to the troops. I'm telling you. <laughs> tribute to the troops. AEW main event time. Orange Cassidy versus Chris Jericho. Le Champion. Why are they still calling him Le Champion? Because he... Remember what he said after when he was on commentary after he lost the title. He was like, it doesn't matter if he has the title or not. He is the first ever AEW world champion, so he was always bees. Le Champion. Okay. That's that's why I didn't know, because he said it on commentary, and when he's on commentary, I zone the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. He's amazing. He's, he's, he's awful. Amazing. Let's not do this again, guys. Don't do it again. Don't do it again. Commentators of 2020. 20-minute rant. Please stop. <laughs> Jericho has Santana and Ortiz with him. Orange Cassidy tells best friends to leave. That was Orange Cassidy's first mistake. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> True. 
we'll get back into that later. Chris Jericho's in control for a lot of this match. Cassidy makes his comeback. Orange juice is thrown into Cassidy's face. I couldn't tell who it was. I think it it's was Ortiz. Uh, Santana, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Best friends come down to take care of Santana Ortiz. Jericho with a bat to the face. <laughs> and then a code breaker. Orange kicks out. Uh, Orange makes another comeback. But the Judas effect gives Jericho the win. Your thoughts on this main event for AEW? Uh, it was good. I liked it. <laughs> it was Why are you orange. laughing? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know it was orange juice, man. I, I thought they were oh. extra Puerto Rican. They had mango juice. With them. <laughs> I was like, damn, they got the hugo. They got the. They got the. They went extra Spanish, but no. Um, it was a good match. I wasn't expecting like. A crazy banger match, pretty much what I expected. Uh, Jericho can still work, and the outside interference was necessary <laughs> to let, to make Cassidy look strong. You know, keep him keep keep his momentum going, even though he lost. Uh, but it did what it needed to do. It made Orange Cassidy look good, and Jericho got the win. This is how you make a match where the loser comes out better than the winner did because the winner didn't have to come out this match looking that good and they did everything to put over Orange Cassidy. They they took they took what we knew about the typical Orange Cassidy match and they flipped it on its head with him putting his hands in his pocket and then immediately giving Jericho a headbutt and then basically then him using his quickness like he always does but then him doing like planchas without the hands in his pocket it was only it was only to to basically get jericho like like we established before the the character get people into a false sense of security that was the only times he put his hands in his pocket and this was a great performance by orange cassidy as in the ring and as a character, and it put over him as a babyface guy that they can really get behind because Santana and Ortiz were out there the entire time. He told best friends to stay in the back. So he was a badass ready for a one-on-one -on -one fight while the bigger star, Chris Jericho, needed his buddies to be out there for him. They just stole, told a perfect story there, and then in the end, Jericho needed to use a bat. He needed to use everything else to get the victory on Orange Cassidy. That's how you put over somebody in a loss. I do agree that um, <clears throat> Orange Cassidy gained something from this match and that, you know, it helps out Orange Cassidy. But I want to talk to Chris Jericho right now. Uh, Chris, the champion, you said this was one of the best matches of your career. This is not one of the best <laughs> matches of your career. Will you stop? Will you stop, Chris this Jericho? Stop trolling me. Quit trolling, bro. This is the best TV match that Chris Jericho has had since 2001. You heard it here first. You've got to be fucking kidding me. TV best, match? This was best, not that Chris, good. Chris, no, Chris Jericho's best TV matchup since 19 Jericho. Years? That's 19 since Jericho, years. Since Jericho and Benoit versus the two-man power trip. You heard it here first. 19. This match was not that good. The last five minutes I'll give you were really good. The last five it was, minutes. It was great. Told a great this story. This was not that great. One of the best of his career. I would have, we would have to go us. back and look at that. He's lying his ass off. Come on. Best of his entire career. Lying ass. By the way, SB3 uh, did the best five matches of Chris Jericho's career. Is that that's what that's what you did, right? And it's on the five greatest. Yes. Where, where's where can they find that at SB3? You could check that out on sportskeeda.com. <laughs> the, the five greatest uh, yeah. Chris Jericho matches of all time. Got that right. By the way, interesting note. I don't know if you guys noticed this match goes past 10 p.m. It ends about the show ends about 10:02, which means AEW. If, if if you guys were watching NXT and you go to switch over real quick on AEW, they're still going, so they're gonna get more viewers just from those two minutes. I, this this might have been a very nice strategic maneuver. Uh, the folks at NXT are gonna be pissed. They're gonna be like, "You cheated." <laughs> we're doing over on next week too. Fuck you. We're gonna go to they 10:05. Did. 
They did, didn't they? they, they no, time. they didn't do a run. Oh, I, oh, I, thought, I, I don't know if uh, my, my TV or my laptop was off, but both were, I thought both went over at 10 p.m. Oh, because which one did you watch on the TV and which one did you watch on the laptop? I watched uh, NXT on the laptop. So that's why it appeared it went over. You you might be behind, but it ended yeah. on time. NXT main event time, Keith Lee versus Adam Cole. This is for everything. The NXT Championship and the North American Championship. They do the awesome, I love this shit. The backstage walk to that that heartbeat theme. It's like, do, 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 building anticipation. I love that shit. What about you guys? Jesus. They do that when they when they lower the cage too sometimes. No, nah, I felt dope. It gives it that uh, like real main event feel. Like this shit is important. We we looking at the emotions backstage before they, you know, before they come in and enter the ring. So I like it. It adds to the big match feel. Uh, Keith Lee tries to do the pounce to Adam Cole into the plexiglass the same way he did to Johnny Gar- Gargano at In Your House, but Cole throws him into the plexiglass. A lot of trash talk from Cole saying you'll never win the big one. Keith Lee kicks out of a last shot. Then he kicks out of a Panama Sunrise. Lee does a clothesline sick bump by Cole onto his freaking neck. Oof. Cole with another last shot eventually. Panama Sunrise is reversed into a huge spirit bomb. Big bang catastrophe. Keith Lee wins. He is the tramp champ. He is the double champ. Adam Cole's reign of over 400 days is over. Keith Lee celebrates with confetti. And we see Karrion Cross and Scarlet looking on from above in the one of the sky boxes in the in the full sail arena. Uh, uh, Karrion Cross does not look happy. That might be what's coming up next for Keith Lee, guys. This match, what do you think? And after that, I have some more questions for you. I I like the match. I really like the match. I like the story it told about who wants it more. And then, you know, you got Cole talking shit, Lee making the comeback. So the only thing I will say, I think I had a little too many false finishes. But other than that, I mean, Keith Lee deserves it. It was a great performance. And I'm just, you know, I'm happy to see him as a double champ. Keith Lee looked like a monster kicking out of all, the, all that he kicked out of. He did. I mean, it was effective. You know, it's just my taste. I think it was too many false finishes, but they were effective. And... When you turn the channel to USA, this is how you book a match where the winner is the baddest, the top, the 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 upper echelon of the entire brand, the entire company. This is how you book your top babyface. He had to kick out of all those things. He had to overcome everything in Adam Cole's repertoire. The 400 day, the longest reigning NXT champion in history, and he j- he does both of his moves. He hits his finisher once <laughs> and gets the victory. That's how you book your top babyface and your first ever double champion. This is they wow. did a great job putting over Keith Lee. Keith Lee had a great performance. Like you said, uh Chris, Adam Cole just was a consummate heel in this match. Kind of the 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 talking trash throughout the entire match, telling Keith Lee he never win the big one and just undermining him, saying that he was better than him. It just added and made his victory at the end that much more sweeter. So I just loved it. It was a great match. Definitely. Keith Lee has the absolute rocket strapped to his back right now. Um, I wanted to ask you guys what you think is next for Adam Cole, baby. Um, I don't see much else to do in NXT for the whole undisputed or to be honest. I think it's time. They've done it all. Yeah, I think it's time, man. You got to bring, bring me into Raw SmackDown. Think so too. What do you think, SB3? I think they need to go to Monday Night Raw, or we have to see the the eventual angle that leads to them splitting up. If they're gonna stay on NXT, we have to see them split up. We have to see that story finally come to fruition. It's been teased before with Roddy and uh, and Cole kind of having differences. They can play it off of, you know, for for Cole, for Cole, the last time he had a big loss, 
his whole thing was point the figure to Roddy losing. Roddy lost his big match, the strap match last week. So now the spotlight is on Cole for losing this big match. So now we can go back to that storyline thread and Cole can be like, but Roddy, Roddy lost the strap match. We got to get, we got to get Roddy back. Like Roddy needs to step up. Roddy needs to go. Like we need to have that if, if they are going to stay on NXT. That is a yeah. fantastic idea. I want to see a triple threat match uh, for the, um, I guess the mini takeover they might do for SummerSlam week. A triple threat match between those three. Because I don't think I don't think Kyle O'Reilly's ready to come back yet. I don't know. I, I don't even need like a triple triple threat match, but I just think at the next takeover, if they are gonna be on still on NXT, we gotta see some type of s- development for the Undisputed Era. I would have Roddy versus Cole. At Bobby Fish is the special guest referee. <laughs> <laughs> Let's let me quickly go through the picks for tonight. Um, Chris went seven and two tonight. Myself and SB3 went eight and one. The True Heels went seven and two. The biggest losses, obviously, FTR, FTR and the Young Bucks. Nobody picked them. The True Heels had 82% in that favor. And, and you were not eight and one. You were seven and two as well. You picked Adam Cole and then saw a spoiler. Uh, yeah, no, I changed I, my pick. I changed I my pick. I am saying no, no. You cannot change, change your pick. Your pick, <laughs> if you want his real pick, watch Wednesday Night Warriors number five, where he picked Adam Cole before the guy from Indu Share decided to spoil the ending of tonight's main event, and he changed his pick. Yes, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You're seven and two, bro. You got an You're asterisk seven. on your record. Exactly. I, exactly. I I had some more time to think about the match, no, and I was like, you know no, what? It's Keith no. Lee's time. It's Keith Lee's no. time. It's Keith Lee's time. I could have I could have read the spoilers to AEW Fighter Fest and then made a post and been like, oh, I pick I pick Butcher and Blade and and the Lucha Bros. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Don't do that. Don't do that, friend. All right, all right. If you want me to give that to you, I'll give it to you. Even though it's yeah. ridiculous, I had a week to think it over. I changed my mind. Jeez, guys can't change their mind before the show airs. Jeez, very, very rough crowd here. Very rough crowd here on Wednesday Night Warriors. Uh, the other big loss for the True Heels was picking Orange Cassidy. Fifty-four percent of you picked Orange Cassidy. Hey, good, our good friend Jonathan from Dirt Sheet Radio, he also made his uh, pitch for Orange Cassidy to win here. But like I told him and like it delivered, he did not need to win to, to get more over. They did the job here. So for both nights of Fighter Fest and the Great American Bash, Chris G finishes 15-4. and four. I finish, I guess, 14-5. and five. I, I, I changed my pick, but whatever, 14-5. Uh, and five. SP3 also 14 and 5. And the True Heels, you guys have voted on our Instagram story. Uh, pathetic, 13 and 6. Uh, please do better. Please do better. Come on. What are you guys smoking? <laughs> Send it this way. Send it this way. Let's wrap up everything. Let's start with the match of the night. I'll start. And I'm going to have to say it's a tie between the eight-man tag on AEW and Adam Cole versus Keith Lee. Both amazing matches. Both you need to see. And the only thing with the eight-man tag is that all the chaos, all the the referee. It's, it's always the same fucking ref, too. That bald-headed son of a bitch. What's his fucking name? Whatever he is. Rick Knox. Rick <laughs> and he's like, what have you guys got? He's, it's like a symphony. It's like he does this with his hands. He acts like he's giving orders, but he's really not. He just wants to see chaos, no control. But the match was still good, especially the fucking ending. Very amazing. And the, the Cole versus Lee match is just more of my style of wrestling. One-on-one, uh, telling a great story in the ring. Selling. No, not selling. I, not selling. No, no, no. You can't kick out of 141 finishers and then tell me that's selling. Sorry. Sorry, but continue. Both of those matches are my match of the night. I'm cheating. Uh, send me a complaint on Twitter. 
Uh, Christy, what's, what's your match of the night? Or matches of the night, if you want to cheat like me. No, I actually came close. I like the uh, Swerve Scott and Gargano match a lot, but I'm going to go with the eight-man tag. The eight-man tag was pure chaos, and I loved every single second of it. <laughs> you sick fuck. Yes. <laughs> almost, almost 75% unanimous here. I'm going to go with the eight-man tag, Young Bucks and FTR versus Lucha Bros, Butcher, and The Blade. It was... It made me just be like, this is why I missed the Lucha Bros over the last couple of weeks on Dynamite, and they proved it right here in this matchup. By the way, we also miss you, Pac. I, I forgot you existed for a second tonight. We miss you, Pac. Come back soon. Death Triangle forever. MVP? I am also going to cheat again. I have two. I'm going to go with Isaiah Swerve Scott for a banger of a match, even though it was a match of the night. You'd still need to watch this match also, Isaiah Swerve Scott versus Johnny Gargano. And also Keith Lee with the biggest win of his career. MVP. Yeah. I'm going only with Keith Lee. Double champ, baby. Finally, champ, finally, champ. Made, the, finally made the big time, so hopefully he uh, continues to run with the momentum that he has. I'm going to follow Romeo's lead, and I'm going to cheat. Co-MVPs for the biggest stars coming out of both shows. In victory, the new NXT champion and North American champion, Keith Lee. And in a loss, the baddest man on the planet, Orange Cast. Don't let Mike Tyson hear that. Jeez. Chabroni of the night. I don't care what Sid said earlier. Even though it was funny, he still looks like an ass. He is the Chabroni of the night captain of the Wednesday Night War. He wins this every fucking week, it seems. Robert Stone. I mean, there's nobody else I can really give it to. This really isn't. I, I can't think of someone. SP3, you, who, who's your Chabroni of the night if it's not Robert Stone? Another example of co-LVPs this time. I'm going to go to the two jabronis that Nyla Rose killed. Oh, come and, on. And, and, and I, I, I'm going to, I might regret this later because I love her. I love her. She's great. She's amazing. She's a great character lately. And her feud with our goat Baker is one of the best in AEW. But you can't kidnap people. Big Swall, you are the LVP. Yeah, I called the uh, the two jabronis that Nyla beat up the jabronettes. But <clears throat> my LVP or jabron the other night, I mean, come on. Is there even a fucking choice? The guy got ran over by a mini tank. <laughs> There's no <laughs> other choice. Robin he's still, Stone, he's you got another one. slightly strung out. I mean, there's nobody else to give it to. He's right. There's nobody else to give it to. The it's Jabroni Robert Stone. Brand. The Jabroni brand. Oh, my goodness. It is that part of the episode. Last week, you guys put me into shock, absolute amazement, when you both picked The Great American Bash as the better show of the night. Will you guys do it to me again? Will you do it to me again? That's what she said. Who wants to start? Show of the night. I will go with AEW. Because as much as NXT had the two good matches with uh, Swerve Scott, Gargano, and the main event, they also had two really good matches on AEW. And that Taz promo bringing back the FTW title, just icing on the cake, and I enjoyed every slice of it. Um, I, it was it was close. It was close once again. I think uh, I explained it better of why I gave NXT the crown last week on uh, True Hill Heat and All Elite Recap. I just felt like both shows were really good last week, 
And in case of a tie, I can't go with the tie. I have to pick one show or the other. So I went with the show I picked least in NXT. But this week, this dead, like NXT had two, three really good matches in the opening street fight, the Swerve versus Gargano, and the main event was great. The Keith Lee versus Adam Cole is the number one match. I would suggest you go out of your way to watch besides the eight-man tag that I gave the match of the night to. But... The, the highs for AEW were just much higher than NXT. They they just got you out of your seat a lot more, whether it was the Taz promo, whether it was the eight-man tag, the opening tag team title match, or the main event with OC and Y2J. They were, the highs were just a little bit higher. They were home runs tonight on AEW, whereas last week they were just hitting singles. I am going to go with NXT as the show of the night. The Big Great surprise! Bash. Whoa, I'm <laughs> so shocked! Oh my god, I'm I'm gonna walk out! Oh my god, I'm shocked! Both shows get a thumbs up. Both shows get a thumbs up. But for NXT, there's there's three matches I want to watch again. I want to watch I want to watch the Street Fight again. I want to watch uh, Swerve versus Gargano again. I want to watch Keith Lee versus Adam Cole again. And AEW, there's just one match I want to watch again, the eight-man tag. And I really don't like Chris Jericho fucking lying to me. Chris Jericho, like, what the hell, man? Why are you lying to me? That match was not one of the best matches in your career. And that's a huge negative for AEW. Big credit to Orange Cassidy, though. He looks stronger. But Jericho, what a fucking liar. (laughs) How do you say liar in Spanish? Mentiroso. Le Mentiroso. <laughs> Not Le Champion. Le Mentiroso. Um, oh, so, so, guys, it's going to be up to you in the Facebook uh, Facebook True Heels group hole. It's up to you to even this out. Join the dark side, the bad guys, NXT. And even this up because right now AEW is the show of the week. Guys, the ratings, who do you think is going to win the ratings? I think AEW is going to win the ratings because of the overrun. Those two little measly minutes that I'm sure many guys watching NXT switched over to TNT to watch AEW. AEW cheated, but hey, whatever. Who do you think is going to win the ratings for week two of the Great American Fighter Fest Bash? I'm going to go with NXT. Because of the Keith Lee and Adam Cole match, I think um, it, it it baffles it baffles me that night one, you know, blew him out in the ratings. <laughs> well, not blew him out, but you know, won in the ratings. So I think night two was built up more. So I think that we're gonna have more viewers on a uh, on NXT for this week. I thought before they even decided to to spray paint or a graffiti the Great American Bash on these last two weeks. Uh, I thought that the Keith Lee Johnny Gargano match, I mean the Keith Lee Adam Cole match was gonna be a big draw for NXT, so I think they're definitely gonna win this week. Any more additional thoughts you want to say before we wrap this up? I agree. I agree with you. Both shows were thumbs up, but I'm 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 begging you to just stop being biased on this show, please, <laughs> please, bro. There's please. three. There's at least two to three matches I want to watch over again. Please, please, please. Oh, Orange Cassidy versus Chris Jericho was better than two of those. Two of the three matches. No, in it was not. But Watch yes, that shit again. Yes, it's yes, fucking no, boring you, until you the last five minutes. You boring you, as fuck. You, you, you 100% were just watching the Keith Lee versus Adam Cole match. That's I think I think Chris will agree with me as well. I think the viewers at home will agree with me. They can tell from just your, your notes that you were watching Cole versus Lee a lot more than you were By the OC. way, I yeah, said it, that I was excited was that for boring. both matches. I was excited for both matches. I will but, say that, that I will say the Jericho OC match had a, a commercial break in it, which kind of messed it up because during the commercial break, the match did kind of slow down a little bit, but it didn't really take away from the match. You know, it just the key, the main event had no commercials. The, it had a way better flow. You know, it was just a better match compared to the other main event. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. <sighs> so that he paid attention more to that one than the other one. I get it. Well, then pay, right. your, com- pay your advertisers then. <laughs> <laughs> All 
and just do a commercial free. <laughs> Don't be cheap fucks. How about that? Come on, Tony Khan. Pay it off. <laughs> commercial free Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. I'm going to Mountain Dew. Thank you so much for this commercial free main event. I am going to be drinking plenty of Mountain Dews in the future. I'm not. Jesus. That is going to do it for this freaking episode. Oh, Wednesday Night Warriors. The Great American Fighter Fest Bash is over after two weeks. Next week, we have a fight for the Fallen. And whatever NXT decides to counter-program it with. I am Romeo Anthony Colon, the connoisseur of all reporting. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at the Pride of NY. And you can find me right here on the True Hill Heat YouTube channel every Monday or Tuesday with True Rewind and every Thursday with the Wednesday Night Warriors. Chris G, anything you want to plug? Shit, man. You can follow me at stick underscore flare underscore woo three O's. And that's it, man. Join some jabronis. We're coming out with a new episode sooner or later. You know, we're waiting for some jabroni shit to happen. Ain't much happening right now. But we'll be there. It's me, it's me, your true heel phenom, SP3. I want to thank these good brothers. They have one of the hardest jobs of anyone on this True Hill Heat YouTube channel in watching four hours of wrestling every Wednesday night in just two hours and then getting on here and breaking it all down. I praised Romeo on my Instagram before, so I gotta praise Chris. He's a he's a father extraordinaire. He's a good he's a good hubby at home. He's working hard during a pandemic, but he still provides this content and comes on here and talks professional wrestling with you guys. So I have to give it up to these Wednesday night warriors. I wanna thank them for letting me on the show the past two weeks for these big, big Great American. I speak bad, three. Great you American are you are baptized right bad. now. You are a Wednesday night warrior. Congratulations. It's, a, it's Congratulations. official. You are now allowed to shake the ropes. I, I just want to thank my mom, my dad. I want to thank your dad. Thank you. Um. So yes, yes. But you can find me right here on the True Hill Heat YouTube channel every Monday on True Rewind with the Condesir of All Reporting and Drunk Guy JJ. You can find me on Wednesdays during the Dark Side of the Ring reviews and Fridays on True Heel Heat with Miss Chrissy Love and Top Guy JJ. And now, you guys, if you want to have some material to read, you could check me out on sportskeeda.com as yeah. I am now a featured writer on there. And if you're watching this, if you're watching this when it premieres on a Thursday, you can check me out. I will make it for the first time I'm saying this on True Hill Heat YouTube channel. You can check me out on one of the biggest wrestling YouTube channels this coming Friday on Wrestle Talk Podcast with Luke Owens. As I'm gonna be we're gonna be talking all about wrestling up on there. So check me out on there and then come back to the True Hill Heat YouTube channel and see what else content we got for you. Is there anything this guy doesn't do? <laughs> Wow! It's the only thing that, he doesn't do is fucking sleep. That thing. That <laughs> sleep. <laughs> sleep. <laughs> All right, guys, that'll do it for this edition of the Wednesday Night Warriors. We will be back next week. Thank you for watching. Drop us a like, subscribe, comment, and check out that Facebook group poll. Facebook group True Heels. Vote for the better show. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace.